In this video, my topic is the Battle of Sheriff Muir. I will be looking at the background to the battle, then how the battle panned out, and finally I will be visiting the site of the battle. First, a bit of historical background. James II was deposed in 1688. He was the last of the Stuarts. He, and then later his son James, known as the Old Pretender, and then even later his grandson, Bonnie Prince Charlie, made several attempts to restore the House of Stuart to the British crown between 1689 and 1746. Support for the Stuarts was stronger in Scotland than in the rest of Britain and the rebellions often began here. One of these rebellions took place in 1715 which became known as the Fifteen. In this campaign the Battle of Sheriff Muir was the main encounter between the Jacobites, as the supporters of the Stuarts were called, and the government army. The Jacobite army was led by John Erskine, the Earl of Mar, and the government army was led by John Campbell, the Duke of Argyll. The Battle of Sheriff Muir was a famously inconclusive battle. Neither side won an outright victory. The battle in reality split into two separate battles. And to help us understand the mechanics of this confusing battle, I have drawn up some maps. This is a map of where the two armies were in the early morning of Sunday 13th of November 1715. The Jacobites, in yellow, were positioned at Kinbuck. The government army, in purple, were in the grounds of Kippen Davy House, modern-day Ryland Lodge. The Jacobites spot a small band of government cavalry on the high ground of Sheriff Muir. The Jacobites move a body of horse under the Earl Marshal to dislodge this band of government cavalry. Argyle spots their movement and assumes that the Jacobites are moving their whole army. He orders the whole of the government army up the hill. The Earl Marshal sees the whole of the government army moving towards him and sends word back to Mar for assistance. Mar moves the rest of the Jacobite army towards the Earl Marshal. The Jacobite army arrives quickly, but in some confusion. The cavalry that should have been on the right flank ends up in the centre, and the cavalry that should have been on the left flank ends up on the right. The battle commences, but becomes two separate battles. The Jacobite right attacks the government left. The Jacobites are successful in their charge. The government left turns and flees. The cavalry flee to Dunblane, the infantry towards the Huari Burn. The Jacobites chase the government troops. There is a fight at a farm called the Linz, and many other fights all the way down to the Quarry Burn. The fleeing cavalry and surviving infantry run all the way to Stirling, but the Jacobites don't pursue them further than the Quarry Burn. 
Many Highlanders take the opportunity to plunder farmhouses like the Lynns. Marr assembles the victorious Jacobite right at Stonehill Farm. Meanwhile, on the government right and the Jacobite left, it was a different story. One government cavalry regiment, the Scots Greys, under their commanding officer Colonel Cathcart, is ordered by Argyll to attack the unprotected Jacobite left flank. The whole Jacobite left is forced back. Despite being driven back, the Jacobites make frequent attempts to reform and fight rearguard actions. But the government troops repeatedly attack and break them as they do. The Jacobites are pushed back all the way to the River Allen. Many drown in the river. Argyll decides to stop the pursuit at this point and return south to Sheriff Muir. Marr moves his Jacobite right wing back onto Sheriff Muir. At this point, neither commander knows what has happened to his left wing and both believe they have won a great victory. Argyll moves the government right wing back up to Sheriff Muir. Here the two armies spot each other, but do nothing. They stare at each other for half an hour. Mar has a good instinct that if he attacks, he can win the day. But Glengarry, the only chief with him at this point, refuses to fight and says his men have done enough for one day. The Jacobite army is a volunteer army, not subject to military discipline and Mar cannot order Glengarry to fight if he doesn't want to. Argyll and the government army move off slowly towards Dunblane. Mar and the Jacobite army move off the battlefield and retreat north towards Perth. The next day, Argyll takes possession of the battlefield. So, neither side has won, and the battle goes down in history as inconclusive. But was it? Let's ask an important question. Did either commander achieve their objective? Mars' objective was to cross the River Forth, seize Stirling, and then Edinburgh, and then take control of the whole of Scotland. Argyll's objective was simply to stop Mar from advancing further south. Argyll achieved his objective. Mar retreated north. Even the arrival in Scotland of James Stuart, the old pretender, the rightful king as the Jacobites saw it, failed to reignite enthusiasm for the cause. The 1715 Jacobite rebellion fizzled out and James and Mar boarded a ship in Montrose and sailed away to France. The 15 was over. I visited Sheriff Muir on a sunny day in August, quite unlike the frosty, foggy day in 1715 on which the battle was fought. Two monuments stand at the side of a single track road two miles east of Dunblane. You are immediately struck by the contrast in their sizes a huge grand memorial to the men of Clan Macrae, and a small modest cairn to commemorate the battle. Clan Macrae fought valiantly, but were wiped out at Sheriff Muir. 
Proportionally, they suffered more than any other clan, and this is a fitting memorial. It's a surprise to discover that the cairn commemorating the battle is by comparison so small and wasn't even erected until 2002. I suppose when a battle is neither a glorious victory nor a crushing defeat, it takes you 300 years to decide if you should commemorate it. On this moor on the 13th of November 1715, a Jacobite army composed largely of Highlanders under the command of the Earl of Mar met a Hanoverian army consisting mainly of regular British soldiers under the Duke of Argyll at what has become known as the Battle of Sheriff Muir. The result was indecisive, but Mar's failure to take advantage of Argyll's weakened position in the closing stages of the conflict and subsequent withdrawal from the field contributed to the failure of the Rising, known as the Fifteen, in favour of the restoration of the exiled King James VIII, the Old Chevalier. There is no visitor centre at Sheriff Muir. Good heritage interpretation can enhance the visitor experience, but all we have here is a sort of bulletin board with pages from a contemporary account of the battle stuck on it. It's written in that old typeface they used in the 18th century with the long S's that resemble F's. I was faced with a decision. Was I going to stand there struggling to read that irritating typeface or would I continue walking up the path? The pathway to the Gathering Stone was cleared in 1990 in memory of Laurie Boyd Wilson by his widow. This is the Gathering Stone. Tradition says that this is where the Jacobites placed their standard at the beginning of the battle, but it's now thought that the Jacobites lined up a little to the north. The government troops were a little to the south when the armies were getting into position. Many of the fallen were buried around this spot. The Jacobite right was victorious over the government left and pursued them. But when the Jacobite right first attacked, the master of Clan Ranald, the leader of the Clan Ranald Macdonalds, fell mortally wounded. The Highlanders hesitated for a moment, but Glengarry, the chief of the Glengarry Macdonalds, saved the day by shouting, Revenge! Revenge! Today for revenge, tomorrow for mourning. A woman at the Linns, a farm to the south, watched as eleven redcoats were surrounded and killed by Highlanders on her midden. A dragoon who had fled to the Quarry Burn about a mile to the south was caught by a dozen Highlanders. He killed ten of them before being killed himself. The Jacobite left was routed. They fell back to the River Allen, fighting rearguard actions all the way. John Lyon, the Earl of Strathmore, who was leading a battalion of Athol infantry, seized the colours and persuaded 14 men to make a stand with him. 
He was eventually wounded and taken prisoner, but was later shot in the heart by a dragoon. There were female fighters in the Jacobite army, an unnamed MacDonald woman who had killed and wounded several of her enemies, refused quarter and died fighting. Cameron of Lochiel, the chief of the clan Cameron, later gave an interesting account. He was about to give the order to advance when he noticed that all his men were running away. He followed suit and he did not come across any of his men again until he had crossed the River Allen, about two or three miles further north. Will you go to Sheriff Muir, bold John Owenis Tour, there to see the noble Mar and his healing laddies? Oh, the true men o' oh, the north, Angus Huntley and Seaforth, scouring on to cross the forth with their white cacades. There you'll see the banners flare, there you'll hear the bagpipes rare, and the trumpets deadly blare, with the cannons rattle. There you'll see the bold Macraws, Camerons and Clan Ranald's rods, and all the clans were loud huzzas, rushing to the battle. Will you go to Sheriff Muir, bold John Owenis Tour, there to see the noble Mar, and all his healing laddies? You will have noticed that the Macraws, the Macraes, get an honourable mention in that song. Although relatively few in number, they were reputed to be amongst the best fighters in the Highlands. At Sheriff Muir, they formed the Kintail Company of the Lochalsh Battalion under Lord Seaforth. As they, along with the rest of the Jacobite left, were pushed back towards the River Allen, they rallied again and again, up to ten times, before they were all killed. The Clan Macrae Memorial at Sheriff Muir. At the top right of the memorial, we can see the Clan Macrae slogan or war cry, Skur Uran. Skur Uran is a mountain in the Macrae clan land of Kintail in Wester Ross. It's one of the five mountains that are known as the Five Sisters of Kintail. The memorial has inscriptions in Gaelic and English. Skur Uran, Clan Macri. Mar Chainachan is Clan Vikra, a hooch and ka blar and churub. It in tres la jerk, de heert via Sayauri, Shachia jerk and scoke jerk. No the vat the gian teha regal nan stewarstach. Va boyungen nan tayach agus nan eilshach an ors du kahe et skia chli in yach gaeli. Agus genishocho va a vor hut le in king the lar ek kthirchen la. Ha in karn kainachan sho e de hokal le common clown vikra e den tres la jerk je hiert mes yauri mo kiert jerk a de skok jerk the clan macrae in memory of the macraes killed at sheriff muir 13th november 1715 when defending the royal house of stuart the Kintail and Lochalsh companies formed part of the left wing of the Highland army and fell almost to a man. Erected at the instance of the Clan Macrae Society, 13th November 1915.
Some say that we won, and some say that they won, and some say that Nain won a tall man. But one thing I'm sure, that at Sheriff Muir, a battle was there that I saw man. And we ran, and they ran, and they ran, and we ran, and we ran, and they ran a war man.